Right, now I'm going to start going in and laying down some um, shadows in the trees, working out, getting some form in the trees quickly. And a simple blued wash using cobalt blue, little alizarin, oh, sorry, a little alizarin, and a little alizarin just to dye it back. Let's bring those in there. So we're going to move quickly now. Let's pull those down through there. There's a lovely light bit that's just, it's just sitting up there and a little dark bit comes out. There we are. So we just knock that in through there. We're just capturing these lights and darks at the moment. Oops, there we go. There's a lot going on in this little scene. When you start looking into it, there's foliage here, there and everywhere, but the secret is not to over-labour it, so we're trying to get this down fairly quickly, fairly succinctly, so that it, we still have a lively painting at the end of the day without spending all day on it. Right, we just get the little old squirter going here and just put up just a touch there of water off the board. Right, and we just put these get these shadows put in over here. I don't want to overdo this bit over here. I just want to concentrate on that bit. So we're just the shadows are moving all over the show here, so as long as I get a feel, a rough feel for what's going on, that that should do me nicely. Starting to get a bit busy here now. Um, a lot of movement around, so I want to get this down as quickly as we can. Yes, the sunshine doesn't only just bring the artist out, I'm afraid. Same colours dropping in here, the little bit of ultramarine, a little bit of Aurelian and some alizarin. Let's get this quite under there. There's a couple of trees coming out of there, so we'll put those in with a rigger in a minute. And I'll just knock this back. There's a lot of shadow going in here, so just to keep it simple, because there's a lot, a lot, a lot going on there. So let's just keep that little bit simple. And the same at the back here, at the side. Let's just so the eye doesn't go. Rushing off the painting, that's that. I'll just put in, bring in a few bits of shadow in through there and under there. Let's not hit that edge of that. Bit of bush that sits on the bottom there. Quite dark next to this house, that'll play off nicely against that stonework there. This, this little bit of a tree here, and that is actually quite dark, that little bit there, so uh, I'll just knock a little bit. Keep it simple, even that's going over the, over the fence line. You can still just see that underneath the wash. Quite dilute. And just go under here, under this little one here, I've just wet. Oh, I'll just put a little bit of a little dark through there, because that really is the bit I want to bring out. You see, just by making that slightly darker, it'll just bring this little pathway out. A few little um, details, and then I think we'll call it a day. Otherwise, we just it, we just overcomplicate this scene. It's quite complicated as it is, so we just keep it very simple. Now I've got these dark colours in. I think I'll just punch in the river reflections. 
it's easier in here we can let the whole lot dry and then we can just come in and put a bit of detail in that's quite dark right just underneath the steps we'll just put a little bit in while it's still wet so it's not it's not overly defined we're just tossing a few little few little lines underneath and you see how these are just working down into the river nicely so we let that little lot dry and then we'll um, we'll come back and put in some details now I'm going to go in and some nice strong darks now we're going to put the shutters in on this house here and we're using a nice strong mixture of ultramarine and burnt sienna just to bring those this lovely dark colors in the hunter window frames goes across across there and down through that Oh, there's a little bit of a sill underneath, so we put that in. Just can't quite see what's going on there, so we'll leave that. Right. And there's a, something going on underneath there, so we just toss in a couple of little windows. dark underneath that eave down through there and there's also a tiny bit of dark underneath the eaves here Let's just stick that in there quickly I'm going to come in now and just put in the, the steps. A bit of cobalt blue, a little bit of glycerin, and a touch of burnt sienna. That just keeps it so they don't go totally dead. Right, I'm just going to use the rigger on this, on these few, these few branches down here, and just tip them in gently. They're in focus, out of focus, so the fact that it's almost a dry brush here works quite nicely. There you go. Sort of willowy, wispy type trees. Right now we're going to put down some a really nice unifying wash right across the right across the river now. So I'm now going to just tick in the uh, the window frames with a tiny little drop of white gouache, nice and quickly. Just tick them in, and I'm just going to stick them in, just like that, nice, nice and quickly. Don't overdo it. Though. 
So there we've captured a fairly complicated scene rather simply. Now available to buy. Try these techniques at home whenever you wish. The extended DVD of today's workshop is now available from the Painting and Drawing channel. For further information and to order your copy, go to www.paintingdrawingchannel.com. Take that group of rocks over there with the penguins on. Look at that lovely speckledy effect. Let me show you how to create that with this, a natural sponge. Mix a nice creamy mixture of colour, quite a lot of pigment, not too much water, and then dip your sponge into that mixture. Test it a bit just to lose some of the wetness, and then go for your textures. Look at the specific textures of the rock. Try to build up the shape of the rock with the texture. So again, remember, leaving your highlight at the top so you've got your roundness. There's a lovely patina to these rocks, blues and browns and ochres. I'm going to start here with the burnt sienna. And then build up in layers with the different colours that you see within that rock. Again, another creamy mixture, this time yellow ochre. You see gradually, you begin to see the speckled layers one above the other, beginning to look like the speckles on the rocks. A wonderful way of picking out those colours within the granite. And now a touch of blue to get this lovely dark side to the rock that's not lit by the sun. I'm going to mask out this little rock in the front there so that I don't go over the top of that. And again, where I want darkness here, I'll mask out with the rock, with the tissue. then you could be quite bold in your application. Quite dilute, make it nice and soft in places. There we go, that's all it takes to create this granite effect.